I think we can agree that editing isn't all about using effects. But it's also important how you use them. So I made this for a recent edit I've done and it was about guns and shooting and there needed to be a transitioning section with a bunch of cool effects just to kind of transition into another part of the video. And so that's exactly what I made. So we're gonna take a deep dive into how I achieved this effect. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that you might not be able to point out just from looking at it. So let's get started. So the shot before the actual bullet shows up is just a quick speed ramp of other bullets and how I achieved this to come up and snap back like that into the other shot. I used one Mroto AI to cut out the bullet from the original clip but I used add motion and on the landing effect, I used snag, which gives it that snap back type of effect. Then I added a drop shadow behind to make it more prominent from the clip itself. And whenever it snaps back, it goes into the original clip that it was rotoscoped out from. And then over this entire clip to achieve this transition, one, I added motion blur, and then I had an adjustment layer over the clip that pretty much just zooms in to make it go sideways. Now, you might be thinking these are the adjustment layers that are zooming in, but they're actually not. It's actually this one underneath here. And the reason why I had to add these two, because there was an issue that while it was turning, you'd get these black bars from the edges that would show. And so I wanted to hide that. So I added two more adjustment layers, one to zoom in even more, so it covers that up, and then another one to zoom back out to how, how it's supposed to look. And then I added this effect called dynamic, which is kind of like a focus handheld effect, which you can kind of see, it's very subtle here, but it zooms in and the edges become blurred out. And now the question and the main effect of the whole thing is the bullet popping out, shining while it rotates and then moving across into the other scene. And the way I got that was if we go into this compound clip here, you'll see that we have a clip of the bullet inside of another compound clip that's rotoscoped out. This is the same bullet that I used in the first effect whenever it snapped in. And the reason why I put it inside a compound clip is so that, let's say I need to adjust the roto or the shadow behind it, I'm able to go inside the compound clip and adjust it and not have to change each and every time I used it. It affects all of the other clips that I used for that compound clip. So inside this one specifically, I made another compound clip and I added add motion, which I use a lot if you haven't noticed, but I added it twice to the clip. One was to make it pop up as if it's, you know, coming out of the screen like you see. And then another was to add that rotation while it's in the middle of the screen and everything else behind it is moving. For the other one, I just added the color grade over it, and at the end here, I added another add motion, which made it do the effect of moving across the screen. Then over the entire compound clip, with like 20 other compound clips inside of it, I finally added the outline effect that you see here shining over. And so my main focus here was to have your focus on the bullet while the background moves across and then the bullet goes away, moving into the next scene. But I didn't want it to be some bland swipe over or you know nothing added to it to make it unique of a transition. So I added a light strobe behind it. But with that, that also got me thinking, I can add sound effects and do a lot of things with the sound design here. And so I added the sound effect of guns being shot like it's flashing and it suits it well because it goes with the speed of it and of course i had adjusted a little bit and so it sounds something like this and now over this entire thing i still have that adjustment layer 
that swiped over. This might not have been the best way to do it, but this is just how I figured it out. But I had an adjustment layer over the entire thing extended all the way across everything below. And this is the same adjustment layer that rotated. And since it's all pretty seamless and connected together, I didn't know a right moment to change it. And so all the effects I'm applying here, I had to rotate it 90 degrees to make sure that it's in the right position considering that it's zoomed in and rotated with the adjustment layer. And so if we add that back on, everything's good. And now what's going on here in the background? Now I already told you about the light strobe effect, but what about the actual clips that are moving behind it? Well, pretty much all I did was I added add motion for them to swipe over at the same time. Kind of like the bullet is moving across the clips that are moving behind it, if that makes sense. So I added add motion to that and the other one below to move at the same pacing. And then I added a gradient between the two to kind of fade it a little bit better. And then of course, to make it black and white, I added an adjustment layer and then just lowered the saturation and did it that way. And I applied motion blur everywhere that there was movement to kind of just smooth out the whole effect. And of course, you can't forget about the sound design. That's very crucial, especially in effects or stuff that you really wanna make stand out. In general, everything to do with sound design in your edit is very important. So I would highly recommend paying attention to those things. I was thinking of a sound effect that was kinda like, like a bling shine, but I didn't want it to be a, a cringy, you know, ding, kinda like this. So I was thinking, you know, what could work? And I came across a sharp katana sound effect. And so this is what it sounds like with the clip. And it works pretty well whenever it's applied to everything else. Oh, and if you're wondering how I achieved this zoom out from the sniper effect, I guess that's gonna have to be a breakdown for another time. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna show you right now. So as you would affect, what? As you would affect? So as you would expect, this is a fish eye lens distortion. That's what's giving it that look when it, when it goes out like that. And so I just applied that effect to an adjustment layer over everything. And once again, this is still inside the other adjustment layer. So it's all sideways. And then I added a shape mask to the sniper here and then added some keyframes on the fill opacity. And then after adding another adjustment layer over this clip, that makes it kind of zoom back whenever it's you know going back, like it's following the, the, the sniper. So it's got that backward motion. And without further ado, after everything's pieced together and done, this is what you get. I'll see you at the next edit.